Welcome back to Breaking Waves Sailing, a channel about Ben and Allie and their adventures sailing the world in search of surf waves. After buying an 80s era sailboat and spending four years fixing her up and learning to sail around Vancouver Island, we have just accomplished one of the biggest dreams of our lives and sailed 3,000 miles all the way across the Pacific Ocean. In this week's episode, we are island hopping around the Marquesan Islands of French Polynesia. We are doing some surf exploration as well as diving among the healthiest reefs I have ever seen. Hit subscribe if you haven't already because you do not want to miss out on the adventures of breaking waves sailing. We wake up in beautiful Fatuhiva and decide that it's time to move on. We secure the boat, check the weather, and plan our trip to the next anchorage on the island of Tahuata. Before we leave for good though, Ben does a quick check of the topography in the area and finds a spot nearby that looks like, with the right angle of swell, there might be a surfable wave. It's always so hard to tell from behind the wave if it's rideable or any good or just closing out on shore or what's going on. Well, there's definitely some potential spots we're going by here. I haven't seen anything like real long, but a couple shoulders, I think. It looks like this well direction is maybe a little bit too, I don't know, in this direction rather than going more at shore. But I don't know, maybe it's gonna wrap around that corner a bit when we get closer. It's hard to say. Don't really know the spot, don't know anybody, don't know anybody that does. Well guys, I believe that we're not gonna be getting waves here on our first French Poly Surf Recon. Beautiful spot though. You can definitely see the setup, how it would work. I think this well direction's gotta be a little bit more onto the land. Looks like it's just kind of going by it. Yeah, beautiful spot. You can imagine when it's going here, it's a pleasure to search. Pretty rare to find like a shallow zone like this here in the uh, Marquesan Islands, the high islands that are just steep volcano and get really deep right beside land. But this this blue here is why there's a surf break here sometimes. I'm guessing. So last night uh, we went out for dinner with some of the locals, and Reva uh, was telling me that today on Saturday is a ferry with some people, some goods comes in and drops and some artists come and bring all their supplies so we're just watching this big like fairy looking boat here and a barge that has a bunch of gear on it go into town like go into shore and I was like oh that must be what she was telling me about and then I look on land and like there's so many cars and like probably everybody in the village supply ship behind us from far it looks like a cruise ship so I'm wondering if it was like an old cruise ship that they refitted into a like a delivery cargo ship kind of thing. The back half looks like like a cruise ship. The front half is like a flat deck with cranes. So, all right. So no success on the surf mission. We are going to raise the sails and head north northbound to I can't remember the name of the island, just south of Hivaoa. And it's forty miles. So miles will start making some way here. trade wind sail here. It's about 15 or 16 knots on the beam. Four miles to go, sunshine and moderate swells. It's really about as good as it gets when it comes to sailing.
Okay, so we're just a few miles out now from what's it called? I think it's called. Uh, it's just a little island south of Hiva Oa, where we'll be clearing in after the weekend when the when that stuff opens up. So we've got today's it's today Saturday, just the rest of today and tomorrow, and then we got to go clear in. Um, but yeah, it looks like the west coast of this island, Ta Tahuita, something like that. Uh, it looks like it's got a bunch of really nice little anchorages. Not really expecting any surf in this area, but looking like maybe some good snorkeling, free diving, spear fishing, uh, manta rays, and apparently the only white sand beach in all of the Marquesas. So I think tonight we're just going to hit one of the more southern anchorages that's close by and then probably enjoy it for the morning and then I'll just go up another few miles uh, tomorrow afternoon and check out check out that other spot this is like I just realized Ali this is the first time we've ever like island hopped in the tropical environment trade wind environment like we just that's our first ever island hop wow just a quick day sail good for us actually it took longer than I thought it would it's getting yeah long. it was a big day we slowed down, we got lazy. We could have been sailing more aggressively and gone faster, but we kind of just, we both napped and we're island hopping, no rush. Cool, cruisers. Cruising. The anchorage we chose was Hapatoni an anchorage on the west side of the island and dropped the hook in about 40 feet of beautifully clear water. After a quick dinner of some wahoo left over from our crossing, we watched the sunset before heading to bed and dreaming of coral and coconuts. And shit. There's so much life. There's so many fish I've never seen before. There's parrotfish. There's coral. There's like schools. There's so many large schools. And everyone said that the best spot's over there. So that was just under our boat. Do you want to take the dinghy over? We swim. I mean, you want. <laughs> Now, we're from Canada, so we don't have coral reef up there. I don't have much to compare it to, but this reef was thriving. It was just teeming of life. It was amazing. Would you look at what's working? Ben got our outboard working this morning. He uh, figured it, I don't even know really what he did, but he figured out way to make it prime. 
What did you do, Ben? Uh, well, finished the mounting bracket thing. Good job. And Bill from Calico Lentis, he's got a Yamaha connector, which fits into the connector that came with the tank that we were gifted, but it's like kind of leaky. Oh. So I'm not sure if it can hold the prime, but anyway, it's got us moving for now. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of leakage happening. We've got our own connectors in Heva, where we'll be a short leap, like in a day or two, so. But this gets us evidently mobile for now. It would help if you can like push in on the hose while we're going. We are operating on a borrowed gas tank since having ours cut out of our dinghy the day that we left to cross the ocean. One of its challenges is that it has a different connection port from our last Jerry. So Ben borrowed a new connector from Calico Skies that wasn't a perfect fit, but it worked well enough. There truly is something to fix on a boat every single day. Nice to be mobile again without having to rely on other people's stuff. That's why the infrastructure, at least like the marine infrastructure, has been better than I would have expected. I don't know if that's like the French influence or what, but really decent concrete wharfs. Like it's all, it's all solid. This was a super cool town. One of the locals actually offered to take some sailors on a hunting trip for wild boar. He then cooked it in the ground overnight and fed almost 20 of the boats. Hapatoni. This is, when you read the blogs and stuff online, this is like a lot of people's like favorite anchorage in the Marquesas. Favorite town, place to visit. The community here seems to appreciate the tourism. And we, of course, were more than happy to indulge. It'd be cool to go on one of these. Outrigger. Why do have that whole other side? Just yeah. for balance? The outrigger, it's called. Cool. Yeah, for balance. How beautiful. It's hide on top. And it's still, like, got its fur. It's the alleys. <laughs> character. Mommy, when I'm coming! <laughs> Me, I'm coming. Like a snotty-nosed kid that's lagging behind and is weak. Because in Canada, where we're from, like, there's all this backstory where we live um, for the indigenous community and like um, colonialism and like how we pushed our religion on them. And now they're kind of Catholic, but they a lot of people are kind of switching back. And so I see this and I'm like, did that happen to you? Are you guys still your own religion, culture? Or did you have Catholicity like shoved down your throats as well? And how do you feel about that? <laughs> We've been over this one. Whatever. So dang lush here. Everywhere you look, it's just green, green, green. Trees on trees. It's like it's kind of like being back home. But more tropical. Yeah, this is tropical rainforest. We're from the temperate rainforest. Where are you? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? They've been harvested already. Are these islands ever logged for timber? I don't know, I have so many questions. This is interesting to me. This is a diesel powerhouse. You would think, with all this elevation and rainfall, this would be a hydro facility. Crazy. Can you believe that's our boat that we sailed all the way over here? I definitely have to this Maybe a pony stop. Do you think people use this? Parties? It works. So our good friends at Mantis Marine, who we met a few years in a row, or a couple years in a row at the boat show in Annapolis, they were kind enough, good guys there, to send us a Mantis navigation light. We have spent most of our cruising life just either bringing a headlamp or using our phone to shine our way as we're cruising around at night. But the reality is it's actually really dangerous. Um, we've heard a lot of stories now of people getting run over either by other boats or other dinghies and people dying. And it's just, um, yeah, you're taking a risk if you're running a little dinghy at night and you don't have proper lighting. So we're happy to be able to add this to the boat. So you can, you just put it on the top of your outboard and it charges with solar or you can charge it with USB if you're in like a low solar area you want to make sure it's nice and bright and it's got your tricolor red white and green um 
and I think it's suction cups to the top of the upboard, but we'll have to play around with that a little bit. But you get the idea. This goes like this, this goes like this, and we've got red, white, and green lights for the dinghy. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on next week's episode. And as always, there are behind the scenes on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.